Pseudo fake dysphotopsia are unwanted images following uncomplicated cataract surgery. They are of two types, positive and negative. The etiology and symptomatology of both are different. However, they can coexist in the same patient. Positive dysphotopsia are seen as arcs, streaks, starbursts, rings or halos. They occur in close to 50% of people postoperatively, usually resolving with time. They occur when the eyes are open and vary in different settings of light, most commonly occurring when an individual enters a lighted room from the dark when the pupils are dilated. In contrast, negative dysphotopsia are described as arc-like crescents in the temporal periphery and are less frequent, affecting only about 15% of patients. Regardless of the type, about 2% of patients have chronic dysphotopsia, which is bothersome enough to require intervention. Factors that are associated with positive dysphotopsia are a truncated square edge design especially with acrylic IOLs, high refractive index IOLs due to internal reflection from the IOL surfaces, biconvex IOL design, and flat anterior radius of curvature of the IOL. This is how images from a normal light source would be formed. Some of the rays that fall on the square or truncated edge get reflected, resulting in unwanted positive dysphotopsia. Some of the steps taken to reduce the incidence of positive dysphotopsia by the manufacturers include rounding the anterior aspect of the square edge, reducing square edge thickness, leaving the IOL edge unpolished, and moving the IOL optical power more to the anterior rather than the posterior optic surface. Uh, differential diagnosis of positive dysphotopsia are entoptic light flashes caused by vitreoretinal traction. These entoptic phenomena are triggered by eye movements and might occur under dark conditions, unlike positive dysphotopsia, which require an external light source to induce symptoms. A medox rod effect by posterior capsule striae from point sources of light, photopsia due to posterior vitreous detachment or retinal tears, and the aura of migraine. This is usually followed by a headache. Conservative treatment methods for positive dysphotopsia include taking care of those conditions that can exacerbate dysphotopsia, such as correction of any refractive error, treatment of any coexisting ocular surface disease, treatment of posterior capsular opacification, and pharmacological meiosis with either brimonidine or pilocarpate. If none of these help, then surgical intervention with exchanging the IOL for one with a lower index of refraction or different edge design has to be undertaken. Unlike positive dysphotopsia that are associated more with IOL material and edge design, negative dysphotopsia are more related to the physical position of the optic. They occur due to a gap between the rays that miss the IOL and the rays that get refracted by the back surface or edge of the IOL. The primary factors associated with negative dysphotopsia are smaller photopic pupil, larger positive angle kappa, shape of the IOL with a steeper posterior surface, a smaller axial distance of the IOL behind the iris. According to Holiday, a distance behind the pupil of between 0.06 and 1.2 millimeters for acrylic and 0.06 and 0.62 millimeters for silicone is more associated with negative dysphotopsia. Nasal anterior capsule overlying the anterior nasal IOL, higher dioptric power if equibiconvex or planoconvex, horizontal or preferably a supero-nasal orientation of the haptics reduces the risk for negative dysphotopsia. The secondary factors are edge design, material of the IOL that is one of higher refractive index and acrylic has a greater uh, chance for dysphotopsia than silicone, negative asphericity of one or both surfaces and a cord length mu of greater than or equal to 0.44. Spontaneous resolution can occur either because of neuroadaptation or the development of translucency of the nasal anterior capsule causing scattering of light into the shadow area. If symptoms are persistent and bothersome, then active intervention becomes necessary, such as 
Viagra is the removal of the anterior capsules and the nasal quadrant overlying the IOL. This is the simplest and safest first step to reduce or eliminate negative dysphotopsia and has been reported to be about 60% successful. Intraocular lens exchange in the sulcus. This decreases the distance between the posterior iris surface and the IOL. Secondary piggyback IOL in the sulcus. Uh, this also positions the IOL posterior iris. The main drawbacks of piggyback IOL implantation are an increased risk of pupillary block, glaucoma and lens decentration either of the original or the secondary lens resulting in refractive error. Reverse optic capture that is placing the optic alone anterior to the anterior capsule leaving the haptics in the bag. This can even be used as a primary measure to prevent negative dysphotopsia from developing in the contralateral eye. Exchange with a rounded edge IOL. Uh, this uh, does increase the risk of posterior capsular opacification as it, as it eliminates the barrier to lens epithelial cells and in the bag nasal optic truncation. Prophylaxis is for the contralateral eye of a patient who had negative dysphotopsia after surgery in the first eye. Orientation of haptic optic junction of IOL in the superonasal quadrant, reverse optic capture, silicone IOL. A new IOL design patented by Masket has a groove on the anterior surface of the optic at the periphery to keep the edge of the capsulotomy inside it. This acts like a reverse optic capture. If both positive and negative dysphotopsia are present, then each has to be addressed individually. If you like this video, you may show your appreciation by making a small contribution to help support the channel. Here below the video window, click on super thanks. Choose the amount you would like to contribute and then click buy and send to complete the transaction. Thank you.